Aldery joins us, the director of the Washington office at the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestinian uh, Refugees. Um, thank you, Bill, for coming on, first of all, from Washington today. Maybe for our audience, they hear and see these headlines, and then they see the pictures to match. I mean, what would you emphasize the most to say what the situation is like for your people on the ground right now? What are they dealing with? Uh, thanks for the time. Uh, look, the, the Secretary General of the UN said it best today that we've gone from a humanitarian crisis to a crisis of humanity. Uh, and if I could add, the, the head of uh, UNRWA's Gaza operation, this is his 11th conflict. And what he told me about an hour ago was that he has never seen uh, mass displacement so quickly, and he has never seen uh, urban uh, destruction uh, of, of this scale so quickly. Um, our agency has already lost 88 of its colleagues to this since October 7th. And that is also, um, frankly, the fastest loss of UN staff in the history of the UN. Um, as the, the uh, intro from the gentleman at the, at the UNRWA school, which is serving as a shelter, uh, indicated it, it's it's pretty grim in these camps right now or not camps excuse me schools mm -hmm. uh, they are triple basically triple over capacity averaging about 4,500 people per UNRWA facility uh, and you are correct we are sheltering 720,000 people at 149 locations we're running out of food we're running out of water we're running out of fuel and in Gaza fuel is everything because uh, Without fuel, you have no uh, power for the generators at the hospitals. You have no power for the plant power plants that run the desalinization plants because the Gaza aquifer is salt water. And uh, we won't have fuel to run uh, our uh, humanitarian operation. Do you know how much longer you can run your operations? How much longer do you have left? Well, it is, we're, we're coming down to a question of days Aid is starting to arrive in trucks, but uh, as uh, our boss has said, honestly, it is a drop in the ocean of the need. Uh, what, what is needed is, is, is a couple things, not just um, that the aid arrive, but that there be a humanitarian pause so we can deploy right. the aid to people in need. If there's not, can you make it through this week at the rate the aid's coming in? Are you going to be able to make it and operate through the, I mean, it's Monday. Can you operate through this week unless something changes? It, it is unclear. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for example, the fuel situation. Uh, the fuel situation, UNRWA is essentially uh, providing fuel right now for hospitals, for desalinization plants, for our own operation, for bakeries. Uh, we supply uh, about 90 bakeries with uh, uh, a little bit of fuel and flour so they can bake bread because folks are pretty much down to bread and we're desperately short of water. Um, but to do that, we have to ration what fuel we have left. And frankly, the rationing gets a little bit more radical every day. Okay, uh, what about the locations that people can operate on from your agency, but also civilians um, or, or exist in? We've been told, and we, the, the conversation we're going to have right as soon as you're uh, through here is with the IDF. We're going to speak to um, get an update from them on their operations. But when we, and we've been doing that throughout the war. And one of the more recent times um, that the IDF was on, they said they were kind of safer zones in the southern part of Gaza. We've reported today that the Gaza city is pretty much surrounded, Bill. Are there any safe zones for your people to operate in that you know of? Our, uh, our head of uh, UNRWA operations for Gaza reported to the UN on Friday, and he just said, honestly, there's no safe place in Gaza right now. Uh, he, uh, he's very concerned that he can't guarantee uh, the safety of people who are sheltering under the UN flag. Uh, folks are down to a couple pieces of bread a day. Wow. So um, the only thing that would help right now is some sort of a humanitarian uh, pause. Now, the Israelis, it doesn't seem like, and again, we'll ask in a minute if there's any, been any change on that, doesn't seem like that's going to happen. Um, so if it doesn't, then what? What, 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 are, what, are, what are things going to look like? Well, things, uh, first of all, uh, I'll look at the glass half full. The talks are ongoing. Okay. And uh, we, we hope that that will lead to a breakthrough of some sort. So it, what happens is if there is no breakthrough, 
you know, it, it, you can get trucks in to Gaza through the Rafah point, crossing right. point, although honestly not at the scale that is really, you, you need a sustained effort at scale. But what will happen is you cannot deliver the humanitarian supplies to those in need, particularly those up in the north. Okay. Um, Bill, thank you uh, for explaining your situation to us and all the best to you and your people there at UNRWA. Bill Darius with, uh, with us uh, from Washington. Let me bring